Good morning, and today it's, uh, well, it's a little about 20 after 10 in the morning, and uh, this is my PV solar diverter to hot water that's operating. Uh, this up here is the AC waveform that's uh, on the capacitor, and uh, these two dotted lines here are two and a half volts. So you can see that the variation peak to peak is less than two and a half volts on this thing. Uh, right now the heater is on full time. Uh, these little top bars here, that's when it's up there, it's off. Uh, when it's pulled down here, the FET is on. And right now this thing is running uh, arc interrupt because it's on full power. So let's So yeah, we're at 330 watts, and for the morning, I've only done 75 watts. And so this is my capacitor bank. Uh, this is kind of convenient to make. It's a block of wood, cut some holes in it, a channel underneath. I have a little video on it, and uh, you can make a good-looking capacitor bank. And this is the inverter board. Um, these are kind of hard to find. Uh, and, and worse than that, you don't know what you're going to get. Uh, some of them are IR2153s, and some are SG3525As, and you never know what you're going to get. The FETs used to be 75N75s, but now they've used, uh, I think, a 3205, which is higher current, but uh, lower voltage, down to 55 volts, so... It's not really useful for anything unless you're doing this off a battery. But this arc interrupt uh, uh, from here to there is 7.6 milliseconds. So we're actually operating at like uh, 67 hertz. And the arc interrupt is an off period of... Uh, 880 microseconds. I I made it extra long, but uh, you can make it a little bit shorter. I didn't want to run this at full power. But here's a schematic. Now this may all look like chicken scratching to you, but if you're going to build anything, you need to know how it actually operates. So this is the timing section. This is the timing resistor and the timing capacitor. And this little resistor between uh, 5 and 7, that's the dead time. I used 1.5K. You want to use at least use a, a 1K ohm resistor to give you enough time. But if you just look at everything, everything is grouped. So this is the timing group, just three pins. That's not too simple. The... Uh, there's a comparator. It's basically just a big op amp. And you're doing a voltage reference here. Now our voltage reference on the chip is on pin 16, and that's five volts. And so you don't really even need to have those two resistors there. You could just uh, put a wire between one and 16. You'd have a five volt reference. And it's very simple. Think about it, one and two. So 2 always has to be higher than 1 in order for it to operate. So you just make a voltage divider. I use a 300K resistor here. Something high. Uh, the 50K for the pot. Uh, you want around 5 or 6 to 1 of the pot versus the uh, initial dropping resistor. And there are voltage divider programs on the internet you can use to calculate out. So this is 15K. If you went to 5 volts, it would be 30K. You could put a little pot in there so you could, you know, adjust it to get, uh, you know, your, your adjusting pot right in the middle. So those pins are taken care of. And then this is your power pin going into the chip. And it's just a capacitor and a zener to uh, get you the 13 volts. And you have to tie power into uh, pin 13 because that powers your 
totem pole outputs and then you have two FETs in the output now this uh, you always want to have a little pull down resistor and it's best if you just solder those right onto the FET so it could be on either side of this resistor you just want to have a FET gate never floating so here's your capacitor bank and from the capacitor bank you go through your water heater element and you tie these two together uh, it's an alternating output which means that each FET generates half the heat than if you had just one. But it's an alternating output, so you have to have the two tied together. Totem pole outputs you can't tie together, so you have to tie together at the FET. And you have to power this. It takes around 12 to 15 milliamps to power the whole circuit. So I use 3K for, uh, you know, my 60 volt array. Uh, basically, for every 15 volts, you increase that resistance another 1,000 ohms. And uh, you could just use one big resistor, but it's better if you actually have uh, several resistors in series. So I'd buy a packet of uh, 750 ohms resistors and just put you know, four in series, that'll give you the 3K. I do that with this board. You can see all these resistors in series. This is my IR2153 board. And the reason you do this is this gives you high immunity from lightning damage. Uh, each resistor has a certain breakdown voltage. And if you put many in series, uh, it won't flash over. So it really makes it... Uh, you know, much more re robust. So this board, I'm not married to uh, any one design. Uh, I'm going to include in the uh, in the, uh, the, the description a there's a, a Spanish paper. It's it's in English that uh, talks about it's a 19 it's 2020 and uh, that was a good explanation of of how this works they use just a a big op amp for uh, controlling the voltage on and off but they say this is the future of water heating forget solar thermal forget heat pumps it's far cheaper and it really is so i'm gonna raise the voltage a little bit so we can actually get this thing going See, you go there. See, so we'll do uh, PWM on and off. I got the thing at 63 volts. At power point, there's a lot of power to each side. And I'm the only one who's showing you all this power that's going into my water heaters is diverted. It's diverted from the solar panels and from power that would, would go to the charge controller. When the charge controller is not actually drawing enough power, if your batteries are full, you're not running some refrigerator or something like that, uh, the power point voltage is exceeded. So this is a 60 volt array. Some of the panels are 58, some are 60. But, you know, when it gets hot, you know, like today when uh, you get a little sun on, your actual real power point is like 57 volts. And when you are not drawing current through a charge controller, charging your battery or running any devices, the array voltage goes up. And when it goes up, you know that when it's over what you expect the power point voltage to be, that, that voltage and power can be diverted into heating water. So I'm running, you know, I got the, this one on my four gallon that's in series with this other 13 gallon water, water heater. And that's running off this controller. And out in the garage, I have one more controller that's taking any excess power and heating water for, for, the, for the laundry. It's free hot water for the laundry, all loads, Every cycle uses hot water.
The clothes come out steaming. They're super clean. It's an LG, which are notorious for mold buildup. It doesn't have any mold because it's clean. That hot water just flushes out all the soap residue. There's nothing for the bacteria. So this is a great system. I don't know why other people aren't doing it. I've been I've been doing it for since 2017. These designs work. And it's really not that hard to build. You know, uh, this has arc interrupt. It's very efficient. I mean, you know, less than two and a half volts on 60 volts. That's like 3%. It's the way to go, and many times you can, this is a, a capacitor bank. I pulled out an old TV. These are 220 microfarads, there's uh, six of them. And you could pull capacitors out of uh, almost anything and just parallel them up. I mean, I've rebuilt these things, but... Uh, you can't rely on <clears throat> it to be any one particular type. There's a lot of cutting. It's just as easy to cut up a little perf board, put the put the IC on there through an, in a socket, and build your own. It's not that many components. You know, if you did uh, one or two parts a day in two weeks, you'd be finished. So I hope you try it. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. And uh, I'll be coming up with some other designs. But uh, this is a one chip, pretty simple.